Okay, guys. Okay, I just got back from running some errands and I had a package sitting at my door, which I automatically knew would mean something had come back. Let me grab my knife and we're gonna open this real quick. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. I am a small reseller. I currently sell on eBay, as well as knickknacks and whatnot. I have to go drop off a package at the post office and then run to my parents to go uh, bathe and cut their dog's hair. All right, guys. I figured while we're out and about here, there's a Salvation Army like 30 seconds down the road. And I'll be honest, I have found things here, uh, but it's far and few between. This is the Salvation Army in South Olathe. I'll put the address on the screen for you. Let's go on in and see what we can find. Okay, so when we first walk in, there's some jewelry and stuff there to the left and a cabinet with some oh, little like home co figurines and stuff. I had to swing by and check out the purses. I really don't know much of anything about purses at all, but I'm actually looking for myself because my purse that I loved broke not long ago. And so I'm, I've been on the hunt for a replacement. This one here might've done the trick, but the straps weren't long enough. I like the crossbody strap. This is cute. Mesh purse. Not a Whiting in Davis, though. There were some cute options here. I just didn't find anything that really fit my fancy. Okay, so this first aisle here are typically more figurines and little collector's items, that kind of thing. This blue horse here, that looks like one of the Trail of Ponies. I've sold one in the past. They can do pretty good, but that one there was not an actual Trail of Ponies figurine. It was a knockoff. This here's an Anarcho Cracked Egg Planner, one of the little small versions of it, and it has the transfer print decal on there of the courting couple scene. It was in good condition. I didn't see any cracks or chips on it. I just decided not to get it. This little dog I loved. I think he was in Nesco, but he had a big chip in his ear. And here's some Cupies. This one here is a left in Cupie. It'll have KW and then some numbers on his rear end there. This guy usually comes in a set of three, and I actually have a set of three uh, listed on eBay currently. He was in good shape. I couldn't find any chips or cracks on him. And then this guy here, he is, I think, a Nesco, and then I think it said 1991 on his feet. They wanted 99 cents for him and $1.99 for the left in one, but I was kind of hesitant about it. This piece here, I think, was an acrylic piece. I'm not sure about it. It looked like it had some kind of a gemstone in the center. Okay, pretty common pattern with the geisha girls. Really, when I'm looking at this type of stuff, I'm looking at the painting job, how well it was executed. Uh, a lot of times you're going to find them, they're going to be pretty sloppy. The better they are, the more they're going to be worth. I really didn't see much in the way of any glassware, and to be honest, I try not to buy it unless it's worth it. It's such a hassle. 
Didn't really see any good canisters or anything. Okay, so these are the made in Japan versions of the Royal Dalton Toby jugs. There's not a whole lot of resale value, specifically in the Japan versions. I really didn't see anything in the mugs there either. This was a piece of hand-thrown pottery, probably studio art pottery. I liked the glaze on it, but it wasn't anything terribly special. Oh yes, this one here is the Homestead Luncheon Set. I actually have this set along with a couple others. I do think they're cool. I really think, I, I wish they would make a comeback anyway. But they're right now not worth the pickup. They're big, they're bulky, they're heavy. Uh, and they don't sell for a whole lot. This here is pressed glass. You could definitely feel that it was pressed. And here was a couple of hand-painted uh, Germany plates, but I couldn't really tell what that said underneath. The painting on them was very pretty, but it, I mean, it wasn't anything extraordinary. I usually check out the frames. I've actually had some luck finding old news articles or old photos and stuff in old frames, like hidden behind other pictures and stuff even. That vintage mirror there was pretty cool, but I left it. I'm not seeing a whole lot over here, but I did notice this piece. And this was a California pottery piece. I love the speckled glaze. Yes, it was dirty. And I looked it over and looked it over and I thought, that it was possible it could be in perfect condition, but inevitably I wound up finding some breaks on the pedals, so I left it. And there really wasn't a whole lot else. Everything was contemporary, floral pieces, things like that. I always like to check out kind of the wood and metal uh, decor area. Uh, I like to sometimes get props and things for my photography or um, for like example doing my whatnot sale. I'm in the market for an electric Lazy Susan. <laughs> I didn't see a whole lot in baskets, uh, although I, I try to stay away from them. Lamps. Lots of contemporary ones. There were a couple sort of vintage ones there, but nothing really worth reselling. This guy here, he was very, very lightweight, very thin, and I believe he was made to re uh, replicate like a mud man, a Chinese mud man. I went ahead and walked by the art just to see what was over there. The old 70s child, the big eyes. Feel like no matter what thrift store you go to, you are bound to find some item with the 70s children. I sadly didn't have a whole lot of luck on this trip, but that's okay. But anyway, that was the Olathe Salvation Army. It's pretty sparse. I almost got those, uh, the two cupies. There was one tiny one where he was standing up and he had like his hand up to his mouth like this. And on the bottom, it looked like it said UNESCO, but it had a J and some numbers. And then it had 1991. So it was a vintage QP, um, the little smaller one, but you know, not, not an older QP. And they had 99 cents on him. And then there was another one, which I actually have at home and listed online for sale because he's originally a set of three and it was the little bit bigger one and he's sitting there and I think he's also got his hand up to his mouth or something like that. Anyway, I showed him in the beginning of kind of going through the thrift store and then I went back and I picked him up and I carried him around with me for a minute and then I decided, eh. The, the larger of the two that I was going to get 
they had a dollar ninety nine on, so they were both reasonably priced. I there was a little bit of profit to be made there, but not a lot. And I already have Cupies listed, and I thought, well, what? They're cheap enough. I could get them and do them as you know giveaways. But I have lots of stuff right now uh, that I can do as giveaways. So it's kind of like I've said before, guys. For me to go somewhere and pick up inventory, it's gonna have to be something pretty special so i'm gonna head back home i'll see you guys there okay so this is gonna be a new one for me so i started looking at it and if you notice the date up here 1 4 24 and it looks like a couple months later they figured out that this person sadly uh is deceased so they sent it back to me. Let me get it opened up. Okay. Let's see what it was. Thank you card. Theodore. What was this? That was a couple things or maybe it was something with the lid. Come on out of there, buddy. Okay, well, all right, I hope that camera angle is decent enough. Let's find out what this was. And we can always reuse the packaging, of course. I don't just throw all that away. Art Deco, Golden Crest. Oh, I know what they are. Okay, these are super, super pretty pieces. Man, that sucks. I don't care that they came back. It's not that. It sucks that somebody ordered something and it literally didn't even make it to them. But they're these really gorgeous uh, Art Deco uh, gold encrusted. This is, I didn't have one of those in my glass videos yesterday. This is gold encrusted, so uh, you can see some of the gold is, is wearing on it, but not, not too bad. Most of it's still there. It's got this beautiful acid etching along here. Just very elegant. I really, really love them. Man, I, I pack stuff. I think I've said before, I'd be cussing me. My good golly. But you know, th at the same time, <laughs> if you ship anything or you uh, buy anything online, you very much understand <laughs> how it goes. So yeah, it was a set of these beautiful, beautiful taper candlestick holders. Not marked. I'm not sure who made them. I'm sure it's one of the more elegant glass houses. But uh, there is wear to the, the gold, but again, not, not horrible, but, but a little bit. Just very, very, very pretty pieces. So I'll get those listed online again. We'll see. Maybe, maybe my original listing is still in there and I can just re-put them up. But beautiful pieces. That's, that's really too bad. So I don't know. Call me a sucker, guys. But... That's the first package I've ever received back that was due to the person being deceased. And, I mean, it's a part of life. It happens to all of us. But I guess I guess that's the way it goes. Have you guys had ever had that before? I don't know why. It's throwing me a little bit. I, I just... It really sucks. I've shown you guys before in a video, one of my really early videos where I went over just very basic, generic, basic packing for something. I talked about including, you know, like a thank you note and, you know, tissue paper, just things to personalize it, give it a human appeal. And one of the reasons I do this this way is because now, not every customer that buys something from me is some lonely person sitting there by themselves. And this is the only human contact they have, but you'd be surprised, you know, how many, how many people out there that just a kind word 
will change their day, their month, their year, you know, like, anyway, I got this package back today and I just thought I would take the time to share it with you. Okay, so that part aside now, uh, I hate to be all emotional and downy and everything, you know, we have enough of that. So my video yesterday that came out yesterday, I showed you guys kind of like my reselling area, like when I'm on whatnot, what that will look like. And I guess I'm curious what your guys' thoughts were on that setup. Like, does it look too cheesy? Does it look too boudoir? Does it look, did I do that right? Does it look stupid? It might, I don't know. I just didn't want a blank wall. And so I went down and through some of my artwork and stuff, you know, the other day and pulled this one up and thought, it's a, a, a simple enough picture, pretty enough picture, pretty enough frame that I could just drape some stuff on it. See how it does. But I was curious what your guys' thoughts on that were. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this filmed before Kyle gets home um, here in like half an hour because Theodore will lose his mind. He loves, 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 loves when, when his daddy comes home. So let me pull out. So all these, uh, again, I'll just say canisters. Um, all these pieces were on that black shelf that I had right here that got taken up to the reselling room. And so all these little pieces got set to the side. And as you can tell again, yes, they're dusty. They're dusty. I'll get them cleaned up though. Ah, uh, this one here. I really like this one. I really like all of them. I think they're all cool, but I really like the look of that one too. It kind of has like a circus tent maybe sort of feel to it. I mean, it's not circus in design, but it's definitely kind of got that feel to it. Oh boy. All right. So I think, was that all of them? No, that's not all of them. I was like, I felt like I had more. This one here is more urn style. Uh, biscuit jars. Some of these are, are biscuit jars is what they're called. Um, here's another little urn style one. Um, and then these ones are more, you know, covered sugars. But I'd like to get a bunch of these guys listed. Uh, this guy, I think he's made in Japan. Is that what that says there? Yeah, Japan. And he's meant to look like, what's it called? Oh, what is that called? I think that might, that might be it. Okay. So, uh, this one here, um, who is this? Edwin M. Knowles, China, made in USA. Just a really pretty, uh, I want to say this dates around the 50s or something like that. I can't remember entirely. Uh, it does have some crazen on it, but I don't see any breaks or cracks or anything. And same thing on the lid. There's definitely some crazen. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but there's crazen, but it's otherwise in good shape. Forgot one right here. This is a, a really cool one too, uh, Triumph. This is American Limoges, Sebring, Ohio, warranted 22 karat gold, vermilion rose. Looks like it's also, what, uh, what is that? Modeled with the model number likely in there. Uh, but I really like the shape of it. It's definitely got that mid-century 
what do you want to call it? like space age ish sort of shape to it um, kind of sort of deco but really more moving into that mid-century modern uh, style this here is just like a little covered sugar here's the hole for the spoon let me open this guy up. I don't remember what his condition was. Obviously, he's got age to him. Um, but let me see. Oh, yes. Whoever had him before called him the Funky Pumpkin. They had him listed for $6. Well, he is a Funky Pumpkin. Uh, he is aged. Let me look at all that. There's still even sugar in there. My God. Oh yeah, so, and he's made in Japan. It looks like right here, maybe, was broken off, but I don't know. I would say this is honestly more of a display piece. I think it would look great around the holidays, too. All right, this little guy here, another covered sugar. Uh, Marianne is who this belonged to. This is a P.T. Bavaria. And that's probably, I don't know, the mold number or something on there. This one here is transfer prints, pink and yellow roses. Uh, lid looks like it's in great shape. I really don't see crazen on this either. The interior looks great. It's got this nice gold uh, trim around the side. Maybe a slight bit of wear to it. There's another transfer print pink rose on the back. This green and the base color of the glazing, it looks like it was probably airbrushed on. But a really, you know, especially for a transfer print piece, really pretty. Really, really pretty. Taquito Company, 1880 to 1948. Vintage covered sugar transfer and hand painted forget me nots. So some of it on here was transfer print i think like the leaves are transfer print and i think maybe this part in the forget me nots but then it looks like they came through and they added in some you know hand painted detailing you see like little green wisps coming off of this here there's some wear to the gold on the handles uh, but the interior is in good shape no cracks no chips lid is same thing uh, and there is the mark on the base there really pretty piece i really really like the colors of it all right so let's take a look at this one real quick uh i don't know what these would be violets maybe i don't know um but absolutely beautiful i think this is also a mix of transfer and hand paint uh you can see kind of a little bit of the white sort of slip trail uh, addition they did on here. Yeah, like right there, you can see the dot matrix on the leaf, you know, especially here. So yeah, I think it's transfer print and then it's embellished with hand painting. Uh, it looks like there is one tiny little flea bite chip right there. But here's a closer look at the detail on the body of it. Um, and this is another, what, P.T. Bavaria, hand-painted. They always put hand-painted, <laughs> despite the fact that it's transfer print. And the reason they get away with that is because of these little tiny accents like that. So, really beautiful piece, though. Then we've got this one here. This is probably one of my favorites. Godinger and Company, Rosebud Biscuit Jar, circa 2001 to 2009. It is a retired pattern. Roses and Pansies, and it's a 24 karat gilt. I really like it. This is, of course, transfer print. Um, and no, it's not terribly old, but it does have that uh, vintage vibe to it. And I just think it's really pretty. I think this would look great. You know, you don't have to use it as a biscuit jar or cookie jar or anything. You could use it in your bathroom, you know, for Q-tips or cotton balls or whatever. And stick all kinds of stuff in there. This guy here, absolutely gorgeous. Little, um, I guess that would be sort of like a mulberry type of thing on the top. And, but just beautiful. And same thing. So the gold work on here, this is going to be like a stenciled uh, transfer print on. And then there's some hand painting, obviously, with like this green and stuff. But then I think like the rose is transfer print. So it's another uh, transfer and hand-painted embellishments. But I just, I love the colorways that they used on this. 
This one here is Hand Painted Nippon. Okay, guys, I have to interrupt for just a second to talk about the mark on this piece. In the past, I have briefly spoken about Nippon marks and advised that anybody who is collecting or reselling Nippon to get a good collector's book and get familiar with the various Nippon marks out there because Nippon marks are faked a lot and I have come across them. And we have a perfect example right here. So this is a photo out of one of my Nippon collector's books. In the authentic rising sun mark, the extending rays are open. The counterfeit rising sun mark show connected rays extending from the sun. So you can see the authentic mark pictured on the left side and the counterfeit mark on the right. And here's another look at what the authentic mark should look like. You'll notice again with the sun rays open. Okay, so now let's take another look at our mark. And you can see here that the sun rays are in fact closed. So this is a fake Nippon mark. Now, this doesn't mean you can't sell the piece. I still think it's an absolutely beautiful piece. But this is what I was talking about with wanting to be as honest as possible in your listings when it comes to these kinds of things. The reason being the Nippon collector, when they receive that item, they will notice it right away. All right, this one here is a Homer Laughlin Rococo style, 1891 to 1900. And it says, not easy shape to find, sugar bowl with lid. So I imagine I found this probably in one of my collector books or something. Uh, it looks like other than being dusty, the interior of the lid is in great shape. Uh, it is transfer prints under glaze again. It uh, looks like there is some hand embellishment and the gold trim uh, was hand done. There's a little bit of wear to the gold trim, but no cracks or chips on the interior of the rim. There is some mild craze in it looks like, however, and I don't know what these flowers would be, but, but they are pretty. It is, it is a pretty design. So, and there's of course the Homer Laughlin mark on the base, but I just think that that is a really pretty piece. This one here is uh, what you'd call an urn style. So here's the lid on it. And this one is, I believe, entirely hand painted, except for possibly maybe like this here. This is probably, probably like gold stenciling. Um, you know, the black outline on the flowers, maybe I'll have to get my loop and really look at it, but that may be transfer prints, but it looks like the pink, the white slip trail, the yellow, it looks like all that was hand done as far as I can tell. And then it is marked Japan on the bottom, but uh, no issue on the interior of it. I don't think this piece is terribly old. I'd say it's late 20th century. So let's see, let's talk about this guy here. Uh, his lid looks like it's in really good shape. Again, with the transfer prints, little hand embellishments here, gold trim. Uh, let's see, interior of the rim looks great. There's a good shot of the florals on here. Um, and who did this one? Wheel Lock Germany. So not terribly heavy, if I had to guess, it's probably pound, pound and a half. I really, really like that. I love the like Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau scroll detail to it and everything. Absolutely gorgeous. Finally, I think we've kind of gone over all these. Finally, there's this one here. This one is Nippon and I will go grab my Nippon book and sift through and find, because I think I found it in there. Uh, but it is entirely hand painted. None of this is transfer. It's entirely hand painted. And I'm sure once I have it cleaned up, it'll be even more gorgeous. No chips or cracks here. Interior looks to be in good condition. Same thing on the body out here. This is all entirely hand painted, hand done. Um, and then it looks like they've got the uh, hand painted Nippon mark there. 
All right, I thought we would take a look at this one too. So this is the Maple Leaf Mark, and this here says, Back stamp was issued in 1891 by the Morimura Brothers Company and continued by the Noritake Company, which was founded in 1904. The Maple Leaf Mark was registered in Japan in 1911 and can be found in blue, green, and magenta. Blue Maple Leaf Mark was applied to differentiate blanks which were produced by subcontract factories against those of Morimura and Noritake's own factory produced blanks at a time when Morimura and Noritake did not really have factories of their own. This mark can be found on the majority of portrait and tapestry items. The Noritake Company speculates that the Maple Leaf Mark was used until about 1911 to 1915. Here we can see an example of an authentic mark on the left hand side and a counterfeit mark on the right hand side. In the authentic, the maple leaf mark is quite small, while the counterfeit mark is exaggerated in size. And here's a closer look again at an authentic mark. You'll notice that the maple leaf is in fact smaller than the words hand painted. And here's a closer look at the mark on my piece, which also appears to look correct and authentic but this I believe they also called a biscuit jar so but I just think that is so gorgeous so so gorgeous it's got three feet total on it here sits nice and evenly lid sits nice and evenly I love that it's entirely hand painted I love that it's completely intact and I really don't even see crazing on it which is just baffling to me. Now the fact that it even has the mark on it tells you that this piece is 1891 and after. Uh, I would suspect that this one probably sits right around the turn of the century, early 1900s, late 1800s, somewhere right in there. Uh, just because of the Art Nouveau sort of style to it, the colorway of it, that would be my guess. I didn't get a chance to record an outro. Kyle came home and the dog went nuts. But I did want to make sure I let all of you guys know how much I appreciate you watching my videos and participating, commenting, coming to my live sales, all that stuff. It, it means so, so, so much to me. My next whatnot sale is this coming Saturday, the 16th at 7 p.m. I hope to see you all there. I will put a link in the description so you can go directly to the sale and bookmark it. And if you haven't already, definitely check out my other links uh, to my eBay store and my knickknack store. Again, thank you guys all so, so much from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me. I hope to see you guys this Saturday and I'll catch you on the next one.